Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black from No Export For You. Continuing along my blind playthrough, this is the first game map. Most likely, if you can't read the warnings, you'll wind up fighting too many enemies and failing the mission. On the other hand, fi perhaps fighting a few and getting a level up before the boss might work out better. Well, the risk you choose is up to you. Honestly though, for a tutorial map, this map has a lot going on in it. Gets the game off to a running start. Now apparently in this particular screen we don't need voice actors. So, let's finish this quickly. Your role here is to cause a big ruckus because it's to get a lot of violence going down. And while you're doing that, we're going to set fire to the things they've got gathered. With that many opponents as my enemies, you're just going to leave me here. It's alright. Given their formation, you won't be surrounded. And thanks to the power you have, you can do this individually. Do this individually, huh? Yeah, you're saying in order to win this battle, I have to do all the fighting myself. Well, as expected of the Belkarab Kingdom's army. Mercenaries are the same as disposable. Warriors. Yeah, Pelgarad is kind of known for underhanded tactics. Hell, it's even called an evil, evil kingdom in some quarters, I think. Hey, we told you everything from the beginning. Oh, no, that's not what he said. From the beginning, we didn't exactly say everything would be on the up and up. It's important to keep some of our plans uh, concealed for limited times. And anyway, the big ruckus is what we want. This is in order to get the fighters in the group to focus on you. That's our expectation. And I won't let you say you can't do it. Like I would. I've received my money. If that's what you say I need to do, then I'll get it done. Mm -hmm. That's good. Because you are really are this way, it's a good thing we hired you. I know I'm telling you to do something rather reckless, but this needs to go well, or else we're going to lose. But even saying that, it would be troublesome to have you die here. If you need to, I've got preparations to... I've prepared... I'm prepared to give battle directions. Would you listen to them? I understand the mission. The contents of the mission. I don't need any further instruction. I'm going to fulfill my role as <laughs> the bait. 
<laughs> I thought you would say that. So once our side, we'll come over to pick. Once our side is done, we'll come over to pick you up. Don't go get yourself killed. Yeah, hurry up and go. <laughs> These guys are actually pretty funny. So, draw their attention, huh? So, defeating soldiers and dwind making their numbers dwindle. So I need to get into their view and do stuff to get their attention. Is most important. Whoops. Hmm. I was playing with the controller to see how the controls worked. And I lost that particular text box. Here's a tutorial. It says this is the dungeon portion of the game. Dungeon exp Before you begin dungeon exploration, let's explain the basic controls. From the menu you can go to the settings and you can save and things. From the allies button, you can configure your allies. You can, you know, prepare your allies. Get all the settings and equipment done. And manage your inventory. And next let's explain movement in a dungeon. If you're using the mouse, then in Jadel's vicinity, move your mouse cursor and right left click. If you continue to hold the button, you'll move in that direction. If you do a single click, it moves in a certain way too. You can also go by repeating clicks. If you're using a gamepad for controls, the left analog stick will move you around. In that case, go into the settings and check out the analog stick settings. Now, also, before you start the game, plug your gamepad into the USB port. Yeah, that's an interesting... Now, to start with, walk around for you. Let's walk around freely a bit. Yep, I can walk around freely, alright. Now, let me look at those settings again. Okay, the game bag. Here you can see the defaults. And down here you can see how they map it. 3, 4, 1, 2. And that means 3, 4, 1, 2. But I actually want 1 and 2 up at the top, and 3 and 4 below. For some reason it says initialize and it goes to exactly what I want it. But when you install, it's not at the initialized setting. Well, whatever, right? Examine. Well, I didn't want to put too much effort into this, but it can't be helped. Let's break this and continue forward. Okay, while you're exploring a map, sometimes the examine button will appear over your head. If you press the button, you get to examine the place, the location, and whatever happens to be there, you might destroy it or otherwise interact with it. Uh, 
Now, among these things there are also ones that require certain labyrinth skills. So if you've got the skill learned, you can press the button in order to... Oh. A certain exam examine pop-ups will appear only if you've got certain skills equipped. In the lower right hand, you've got the labyrinth skills that your party has learned. Information on all of them. Looks like gathering level one, the sight level one, and power level one. Hmm. So every character has some labyrinth skills that they can learn. And you can manage the labyrinth skills in your party menu. And if multiple party members have the same skill, have the same labyrinth skills on, then their sum total becomes your level. Huh, okay. But if your skill levels are insufficient, the, the examine pop-up will come up, but you won't be able to actually do the examining. You end up, you know, a pop-up with a grayed out button kind of thing. And in the event that nobody has the labyrinth skill that's appropriate for it, then the pop-up won't appear at all. So as you gain new allies, there's occasion that you'll learn new labyrinth skills. And sometimes you get to go back to previously completed maps and things. Yeah, we've played that kind of thing. Whoops. I pressed the analog stick when that popped up and it made it go away. Huh, anyway, tutorial says that if you see things and pick them up on the map screen, you'll open up treasures and stuff. Oh, you can also defeat monsters that way. And gain items as well. It says there's an upper limit to the number that, of items that each character can carry. So you can't retain more than your total inventory space. And in a battle, your characters can only use the items that they happen to be carrying. Be careful there. So the items that you receive are put into each character's possessions. There's also, you can also change it so that it goes directly into the, the party pot. So I guess each character has their own inventory and there's also the party inventory. The characters used get to use their character inventory in battle, and the party inventory is... I, it's the stash. What can you say? So the possessions in the stash can be seen in the menu. Up at the top there we can confirm our inventory limit. And for more details, we can go to Menu and Allies. Or, more simply, the Allies button. So 
So even if all of our party members are filled up in their inventories, we can still retain things, but in the stash. But if you go over the upper limit there, then a penalty will be assessed. Mm. Interesting. Maybe the stash does something I didn't realize. Well, if you have too many items, you can't run while you're in the map. And in the battles, your movements will become slow. There are maybe other demerits. There are other demerits, it says. And in the event that you go over your upper limit, you can also abandon items. So, take care. Mm, furthermore, as the story progresses, there are important necessary items. Well, they call them necessary IMPORTANT ITEMS! And when you pick them up, they are not included in the inventory limits. They are not counted against your inventory limits. In order to confirm the... Ne the important items that you have, you go to Menu... Information. And there they have the important items. Okay, just testing out the buttons here. Now oh, there's a button. Oh, a tutorial again. It looks like the button I pressed was the ally button. Select on my particular. And select on my particular gamepad. So, in Possessions, every character's... It shows what every character has, is carrying. And you confirm. So you can select items and confirm them. And equip them. Give them to others. Pretty regular stuff. Items that are equipable have an icon in the lower right, a blue circle. And consumable items have an icon in the lower right, the number, the usable number. Number of uses, yeah. So in the lower left of that... Hmm. There are settings for... Now oh, that's where the setting to put it in your invent... Put it in the... Character inventory or to put it in the stash. Excuse me. If you select Possess, then it will go to Characters Inventories when you pick things up. Well, okay. Okay, navigating the inventory is going to be easier with the mouse, certainly. Oh, look, healing water. Uh, let's see. How much you... Those numbers show how much you, it costs to buy it, how much you can get for selling it. And... An assessment value? Hmm. It says the effect is recovery and the quantity is 100. So at this point in the game, I've got 96 and these full recover 100. But that's not going to be true forever, I'm sure. 
Um. Now, oh, more tutorials. You know what? Screw you. I don't need to read every single explanation. Now, you've got buttons that make you run faster. And this is regular speed. And there's even one that lets you walk. Great. Oh, yeah? Hmm. All right, two of you on night. Who's there? So here you are. Huh. Let's get this commotion started. Oh, you suspicious fellow there. I'll apprehend you. Don't you mean comprehend an auspicious fellow? Let's see, regular knights of Til Tilfion. Let's see just how powerful you are. Come at me! Tilfion can't be defeated by one so easily by one knight. Huh. I'm gonna make you regret your impertinence. It's the weak ones who make the most noise. Noise. This is my job. Don't think bad of me. Huh. Alright, let's explain battles. In the upper area, you've got the green colored gauge. That is all of our allies' hit points added together. Generally, generally taken. Generally taken together, generally called the general endurance. So, in this particular battle, we've only got one person, so it's your individual value that goes there. So, we need to win before this particular gauge gets to zero. Hmm. So, in a battle, there will be at most up to five enemies. Five sets of enemies. So, we've got two enemies on screen, and over in the upper left, it shows one. So, this is one set of enemies, I guess. This time they're coming only from the front. But if your luck is bad, you can be surrounded on all five. Surrounded by all, on all four sides. So the damage you take from the sides and the back will be increased. So be careful. So if you're on the map, the dungeon area we were looking at before, and you approach an enemy from behind, the situation will be reversed. Um, that It's saying that if an enemy approaches you from behind, that's one of the accounts. That's one of the effects. Now, and on the other hand, if we approach them from the backside, we get an advantage in the first round. So, let's take, make good advantage of that. So, the battle takes order, takes action in the order shown below. So, these icons on the bottom all progress to the right. And when they get to the magic circle, 
They take their action. They select their action. Okay, depending on the action that you choose, your place in the lineup is going to be changed, so take care. So make note of that when you make your choices. So, and also, when we've got allies or enemies acting in uh, immediate succession, then it becomes a combo. The critical rate goes up when you do that. Hmm. I just checked the chat here. Sounds like my... The game music is too loud. Let me check. Okay. I can't immediately get feedback, but I've turned up my mic volume a bit. Anyway. So when there are several enemies, when you have several allies together, wrapped up into a chain, then there may be some special effects that occur. How nice. Furthermore, Jedal has a skill called Lone Wolf, and other skills like that exist. So, support. There's such a thing as chain items that occur as support. And chain items can be used by allies. <laughs> so chain items can be used by allies, and using that we can... Sorry, I looked at the chat again. I think there's about 10 to 15 seconds of lag, at the very least, between me saying it and my viewers actually hearing it. Anyway. These chain items can be used to make a succession of actions. Furthermore, you can stock up chain items in order to link them with other chain items. Oh, blah, blah, blah. The tutorial is really long-winded. And furthermore, there are other chain events that will appear in battles. They'll occur and randomly pick allies or enemies to have effects on. If your luck is bad, it may occur, but it only attacks your... that those type of events only affect your allies. But if a chain event happens when you're defending, you'll be able to dodge it. So if you don't want to be hit, then choose defense. So there's automatic, there's uh, assorted, and there's manual, and those are the modes for battle progress. So there's automatic battles, and apparently you can set 
a setting that lets each of your characters do things in that appeal to their individual personalities, and then you can manually select everything. Alright. I'm gonna do simple attacks here. And I get to use the item again. <laughs> or I'll attack. Let's see. You know, it lowers their dodge and defense. Okay, those two put together did 18 damage. And I did 13 by myself, so it all has a bit of a advantage. Okay, I oiled them, and this will fire them. Hmm, not bad. Hey, not worth speaking of. So, the all can swing its sword so violently that it raises up powerful gusts of wind. Makes the enemy sweat and stuff. Oh, how amazing. How much power does he have wielding a sword like that? You think you could stop me with such a lightweighted with such a lightweight crap? I don't know. So, apparently Jadal uses a really big sword. Hard to be stopped by typical weapons. You're a monster, Arg. You know, this is kind of boilerplate fighting talk. Especially when, you know, Jadal's absolutely overpowered in these guys. So... These sharp sounds of cutting echoes throughout the night. Alright. Next up. Who's next to be erased? Hmm, <laughs> curious. <laughs> okay, this time it said lime color. Lime. This kind of lime. Hair colored night. Uh, okay, great. So I went to take a look, and sure enough, we can see his hair now. I got zero cares, though. So he embraces his fear and shows his back and runs. But the sword chases them down with a number one symbol strike. Number one in Japanese is just a horizontal strike, so he's following up with a horizontal strike on the guy. 
Ah, poor dumbass. Well, seeing such a pathetic figure. Well, it all cuts him down and continues on. <laughs> More than expected, you guys are weak. Are you really, really proper, for proper soldiers? If the training of your soldiers is this bad, you really can't complete in your missions. Check it out, this guy's name is Brown Haired Knight. And he's asking, What the hell are you? Do you know that we'll deter that we are the Tilfion Alliance's knights? Yes, I know. That's why I'm here to kill you. So these guys are left all pale faced in the inside of Jedal swinging around that giant sword of his. <laughs> so you too, like those guys, should let out some pretty good screams. And you can just die screaming. But if your allies come along, maybe they'll save you. If you go now, maybe I'll just let you run away. <laughs> there are bandits over here. There are bandits over here. Somebody come. <laughs> That's right. His mission was to draw everybody's attention. That's right, just like that. Let everybody in the vicinity know about my presence. And since it's raining like this, here in the rain, just desperately throw yourselves at me. Hmm. <laughs> hey. No. So from now on, how should I draw the enemy's attention? Yeah, I can see their stuff. If I use that, I might be able to pull something off. And if I climb these vines, there might be something advantageous. Look, a lantern. If I smash it, if I make it disappear, then it may, then the battle may become more chaotic. Hmm. Well, we are kind of here to raise hell, so chaos might be what we're looking for. And since I'm operating on my own here, let's take advantage of what I can take advantage of. My mission this time is to cause a commotion. If I defeat too many enemy soldiers, then the people causing... Then the commotion cause will actually decrease. It'd be best to get this battle, you know, at a good simmer. Interesting. So if we defeat enemies, the commotion that they raise will decrease. The number of soldiers causing a commotion will decrease. Ah. So if we get into too many battles, then our mission will be failed. So take care there. Good thing I can read that. 
If I couldn't, I'd just go around killing everything. Okay, there are two patterns for making contact with an enemy. One way is to come into contact with an enemy while walking around. So if you come into direct contact while walking around on the map, then it becomes a battle. We call this a symbol. Symbol? Well, symbol encounter, it says. I know, because on the map, Jedal is represented as a symbol, and their enemy is a symbol. Symbols come together, you get a symbol encounter. Alright, on the right side, there's a button called Search. Okay, there's... I heard the chat check sound, so I was reading the recent chat. Apparently it goes up and down. Maybe this will work. I'll go slow. Anyway. On the right side of the screen is a enemy search button. If you press it, then... No, no. Then you can uh, get battles for free, I guess. If there are no contact battles available on the map, then we won't be able to use the the uh, search button. Hmm, curious. And. In certain special maps in the upper portion, there will be a red and blue gauge that appears. So, according to what you do in the battle, that gauge will move to the right. And if it gets all the way to the... No, if it moves to the left and gets all the way to the left, then a bad thing will happen. Hey, I imagine if we get all the way to the right side into danger, we lose the battle in this case. So, depending on the map, if it gets all the way to the left, you could even get a game over. So, take care when you're going into, through your battles. Okay. Another healing water. Well, in this rain, as expected, you can't really set this on fire. Even though it's dried oak. Or is that pine? Yeah, one tree is the same as another. Anyway, in this particular battle, they've fallen in around and gotten all muddy. Okay. I was hoping to set at least one thing on fire over here. Draw more attention, cause more ruckus, yeah. Huh. Well, no. If in my actions I give away our... our objective, that would be bad too. So let's pick another way. Alright, whatever. Oh, 
okay in the darkness like this with the rain falling in the forest and all I individually getting the attention of the entire company is a bit difficult but because of that it's going to be necessary to use some clever methods so sitting our hands upon these stones we push it with a good deal of power mmm ah <laughs> It's a pretty heavy set of stones. But putting my back into it, I'll move it just a little. And the stones, as they move towards the cliff face, roll down towards the enemy company. Ha! <laughs> That's a lie. Or rather, this can't be happening, would be a better translation. Stay away! Hey, it's the lime color, lime hair guy. Uh -huh. Are these guys just going to have those names? We already killed one lime hair guy, so this must be a replacement lime hair guy. So anyway, these... There's been a collapse on certain uh, items that they had in their camp. Also, are you alright? Okay. We pushed some stones onto their luggage or whatever. And now it's pissed them off because it's completely wrecked. So, part even the blades of the grass in your search for them. Yeah, whatever. Yep. This did something they didn't like, and they raised some more ruckus. Okay. Do, 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 do. I thought that the sound of the rain would cover it up, but that worked pretty well. From now on, if they see me, they'll probably give chase. Let's try and lead them away from where Yutere is. Hmm. Uh, okay, we extinguish it. Let's check the. Let's go find some more lamps and extinguish them too. Those are guards. It looks like it would be best to extinguish lights in the vicinity. They probably don't have as good dark vision as I. But they're not stupid. Let's try and Extinguish these lights in a way that they don't notice. Hmm. Oh, oh, the lights have disappeared. Who the lights have disappeared. Who disappeared them? Uh. Alright. The other guy says, calm down. It's raining, you know. 
That's all that happened. これが落ち着いていられるか傘がついているかがりみなんだぞ雨の影響なんか受けない The other guy can't calm down because the lanterns were protected by umbrellas. It can't be because of the rain. The guy is in the middle of the rain. I'm going to go to the rain. I'm going to go to the rain. So there must be enemies nearby. Before we r e surrounded by darkness, we need to find them and defeat them. Wait, I'm going to go to the rain. I'm going to go to the rain. Don't just go swing around your weapon, stupid like. You'll hit your allies. Look at that! I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. I'm going to be able to do it. I'm going to be able to I can't do this、uh, that stupidly. I'll take care and search the vicinity. Alright. The chaos in the area is spreading. And there are more people wandering about. No,、oh, looks like they figured out my intent. But since they were relying on the light, they won't immediately get used to the darkness. Hmm. Gishin Anki. So we get to increase the secrecy. <clears throat> And now increase the subterfuge. I'm going to raise my voice and get them to cause more ruckus. Alright? Maybe I read that wrong. Um, hey. What's that over there? That's a magic circle I'm not used to seeing. <coughs> hmm. If it's something used for some kind of magic, I might be able to use it to. Accomplish something. All right, so let's investigate. Okay, reading an inscription on a stone placard. It says something fire. Repeat it. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Battle technique feather. Sounds like something that gives a temporary bonus. I don't bother. I see something useful, I gotta go get it. <laughs> Giant's secret stone. Ah.、Uh, it looks like something that can raise the upper limit of my abilities. Let's see. This is an uncommon item.、Hmm. It increases your HP by 10 points. Aw,、oh, man. They're not using Jupiter stones for that. Rip off.、Hmm. But this is an entirely different battle system than the Meister series, so I guess they don't have to.、Oh, I see. In the mini map, you can see a gap there. It all actually jumps the gap if you walk up to it. Get off me. Are you off me? Okay. 
Be more careful. You don't see me. Oh, now he moves. Don't need to press the button there. No. Um, war history ring. I'm used to seeing these. Alright, nothing more here. Let's get out of here. So long, suckers. Alright, so... It's equipable. Uh, let's equip it. Oh, how about that? Yeah, over on the left you can see it'll add two to my attack power. No, it looks like if I continue this way, there's no turning back. Uh, I do want to see if anything's changed over here. Oh. I extinguished all the lanterns, and apparently that activated this. Maulseki. Okay, so this is a Maul stone. It's a special treasure stone. In every map, there is the same kind of magic circle. And if you fulfill the conditions, then you get something out of it. And your Maul stones are... The number of Maul stones you, still, you have are shown in the upper portion of the screen. So, what do they do? It will become clear the details about the Mal Stones as the story progresses. So, I don't get to find out right now. Alright, I think I've done everything. Let's continue on. That magic circle gave us a Mao Seki, or a Mao Stone. What's a Mao, you ask? From my point of view, a Mao is a Mao. As for more concrete terms. In the Zelda series, Ganondorf is a Dai Mao, translating to Great Evil King, so Mao translates to Evil King. In the Disgaea series, the Maos are known as Overlords. And on TV tropes, there's an order called Demon Lord, a viable translation of the term, and a good article describing what a Mao is, from my perspective. I'll give you a link in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time when we fight the game's first boss.